Hey, I'm Gavin Haverstick with Haverstick Designs. We're here with Lauren King, owner of Oak Hollow Recording Studio. So thanks for having us. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, it's so, so nice to be in the space. It's one of my favorite projects, honestly, that we've ever done. Um, it, you know, I talk about it all the time. So to have the chance to be able to come here and, and document it and show people uh, this space. I mean, it's just this hidden little little gem in your backyard. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We're friends uh, mm -hmm. now, but uh, uh, back then I didn't know who you were yet. And, yeah. and Mike Peacott uh, at Sweetwater yeah. was the one who introduced us. Lauren's been a client of mine for a while, and it's always been one of his big dreams to actually have his own own studio. I talked with him a lot, and I kind of talked with him about what I was trying to do. And he's like, oh, I, I have a really good fit for you. I've done a number of projects with Haverstick Designs and go back with Gavin Haverstick quite a ways. His attention to detail is fantastic on studios. So I, I made an introduction between Lauren and Gavin. I remember when you first reached out, you sent some pictures of this place. And I remember you said you bought the house be partly because the space was here. It was a shed, for lack of better words. I mean, it's a dirt floor. And I'll be honest, like when you first sent it to me, I was like, I, I don't know how serious he is about this. You said, I want to do like a really high-end studio yeah. in this place. And then after we got to talking, I was like, yeah, he's he's going for it. You know, we started with a layout. You know, you had some some ideas of what you wanted the space to be. Probably one of my, my favorite parts is that uh, we did eight different layouts for the for, for this phase, if you remember. Originally, you wanted a control room and a live room and an ISO booth and then a wood shop. No, I just wanted an area to have a shop. It's like, you know, it's like this seemed like a building you could do that with. The wood shop was almost equal to the size of the studio. Mm -hmm. It was like 584 square feet to start, and then we moved it to 512. We started yeah. to shrink a little bit. Um, and then by option six, I believe the wood shop was completely gone. <laughs> six, like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you got really excited yeah. about the studio itself and, yeah. and uh, being able to um, just kind of go for it. Yeah. And, and you're like, I could put up a, another shed somewhere yeah. to do a wood shop. Yeah. One thing that was interesting though is how we was able to take a rectangular shaped building and it doesn't feel like that on the inside. Right. You know what I mean? And me and you talked about that a lot from the beginning. Like, how can we make this feel unique? Mm -hmm. And it's like, the shell shouldn't matter in a sense and that was i felt like we did a really good job i did too on yeah that, you know one of the unique aspects of the control room was the angle that we set it on to be able to have the good sight lines into the into the various rooms we've got a live room here a vocal booth over here um and i remember doing some ray tracing of this space and and selecting the angles of the walls to make sure that uh, we're guiding sound away from your ears rather than it being uh, you know focused right back at you uh, because we do have a lot of glass in here, you know, and it needs to be angled in, in the proper way so it's not a negative to your to your mixing space. There's uh, a lot of cool acoustical details that went into this and, and that you had to build. <laughs> and uh, there's this big cloud that's directly above the, the mix position. And um, what's really neat about this cloud, uh, remember we talked early on in that you said, man, I would really love in my control room if I can have a great mixing environment, but then I can just spin around in my chair and track an acoustic guitar in here. I remember you, yeah, we yeah. talked about that early on. It's like, how can we do that? And that was what you came up with. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, so yeah. The, this cloud, it's it's pretty large cloud above there. And the front half of it is all fabric and absorption. Um, and it's pretty deep. It's about eight inches deep or so. And that's helping with the first reflection points, but then also with the floor to ceiling axial modes that are happening in the room. But then once you get to past that first reflection point, we switched it to being more of a hybrid absorber diffuser type product with these wood slats that are, are spaced out. And that gives you some additional reinforcement from the ceiling if you were to spin around and play right. your acoustic guitar. The other nice thing about that is you're then facing this large wall of diffusers too. Right. So it keeps yeah. like kind of an open sound. Um, and so I, I love the, the flexibility in that, you know, mm -hmm. just be, being able to use this room for multiple things. I love the fact too that this is kind of a little secluded in your backyard that for the most part you know, people would think it's a storage yeah. shed, but then you walk in and you see this space and it's it's yeah. uh, kind of out of this world. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's like a vacation at home. I mean, you come out here and just come out and listen to music. What's funny is you get used to it a little bit and then people come over and they're just like, wow, <laughs> this place is incredible. And yeah. You kind of forget how incredible it is. I mean, just it has even has an amazing smell, the wood. I don't know if you can smell it when you yeah. walk in. It's like, there's all these little things. It's like, wow, this is, this is awesome. One of the big things was uh, isolation, you know, making mm -hmm. sure that 
uh, you know, you've got neighbors that are, are mm-hmm. close by if they're cutting wood out there or doing a, a you know, mowing their lawn or anything like that, yep. making sure that, that that doesn't disturb you, but then vice versa, you're not disturbing yes. them. And that was kind of with isolation in mind, you know, I've had, this is my third studio and I built one room studios. Mm-hmm. And for somebody that's kind of been in the one room studio feel, it changes everything when you have good isolation and you can actually monitor through speakers while you're tracking yeah. and enjoy the whole process come and go. and that might seem like well a given to most guys building a studio but you know on more of a hobbyist level like myself it's Mm -hmm. like it it changes everything yeah we we ended up going with a full like room within a room for each of these spaces Mm -hmm. so we've got double wall systems with a inch air gap in between and lots of mass on either side Mm -hmm. and and each room is completely kind of free floating on its own yep uh which uh, really great for isolation we were just before we started filming we tested out a little mm-hmm. bit and, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah it's it's you guys did a great job with with uh, implementing it because a good plan is only you right. know part yeah. of it but yeah. you guys had to pull it off that's one thing with you that uh, I, I tell people this all the time is that you're the luckiest studio owner in the world because yeah, you're in project management for a construction company right. as your normal business and then all of your bandmates that were helping out with this thing were contractors yeah. you yeah. know and like that doesn't happen typically no you know, no uh, it's only most people are trying to find somebody to build their project for them exactly you know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, along those lines, we, we just took all the steps and me and you talked a lot. You know, like we floated the floor. That was something that we hadn't talked about all along. We were going to do floor. And this is actually a, a gymnasium style of floor, the way that it's kind of up two or three inches. Mm-hmm. And it's the isolation is great. The base yeah. translation is very, very low, yeah. in my opinion. And that was just something I didn't expect to get another benefit from and, you know mm-hmm. so all these little things just added up in the end and you go well how do you get good isolation well it's not one thing right you it's, know, it's yeah, just it's all sum these of things all, everything had to be planned out perfectly for getting audio to the right locations um, like here underneath the credenza here we've got this trough that is underneath the producer desk here and that is where all the cables are going to run to all the different rooms, you know, yep. and, and uh, in our CAD drawing, we've had to supply you with, these are exactly where the walls need to go um, because not only do we have uh, uh, kind of room within a room set up, double wall systems, but we are also uh, cutting the uh, concrete slab in between them. You yep. know, like if you were to look at these two walls, one wall sitting on one side of the concrete slab and one's on the other. Yeah. And, and uh, so there's just a, a lot that goes into it. I remember some of the early photos you sent us and you know you have the the PVC piping popping up in the the right mm-hmm. locations and yeah. I know for you like that was a kind of a scary thing like oh. this better be right it was a lot of forethought on yeah. every aspect and you know to see it and enjoy it at the end is just awesome yeah I mean you should I mean you just guys should be really proud about what you pulled off because it's not easy no, you know like no. any anything building a studio I always tell people it's it's going to take longer than you expected uh, it's going to be harder than you expected yeah. but um, it's worth it in the end. And it's like, going to cost more than you expect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that part too. I mean, we, we try to be like super conscious about budget and yeah. make sure that we're you know giving you options. And uh, but you know it's it's well, an expensive hobby. You know, with anything, at first you had a budget and then you get into it and you're like, but I want the nicer. You know what I mean? So it's not a, it just happens. That was the thing like with my floors. I took these out of an old house and did all reclaimed floors. Yeah. And I could have went cheaper, but it's just it has a vibe to it. No, you know, it just it, it's one of those things where it's like, well, we've came this far. Right. We're not going to get let's, cheap now. Let's, let's Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Some of the other elements that we have, it, we, we do this in a lot of our studios where um, we have a soffit base trap going around the perimeter, mm-hmm. and uh, that helps with tangential modes in the room. And it's also a place in the room where um, you don't have a lot going on anyway, mm-hmm. and, and so you might as well make use of it for right. base trapping. Yeah. And, and you can't really overdo it when it comes to base trapping in small rooms. Like right. it, you, you need a lot of it. And so this kind of orange uh, um, color border around the perimeter, uh, that's all just lightweight wood framing. Like I think you used two by twos and you yep. framed it out, uh, filled it with insulation, and then then wrapped fabric around yeah. it. And it it looks yeah. more like an architectural detail than it does a Cusco treatment. It does, yeah. And it was all cedar, just a nice cedar smell in here for a long time. Yeah. So it was like it was a, it had all kinds of benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> There's also the cloud in the back of the room um, that uh, that helps with people that are sitting in the couch area to be able to, to hear uh, a little bit uh, cleaner sound. Um, this back wall here um, is, is something that's really cool because when we designed it, 
these angled walls, they end up uh, continuing on and then coming to a peak. Uh, but this is about a three foot deep base trap. Yeah, like it, it is right. completely filled with with insulation. Uh, I think we also use some mass loaded vinyl uh, on the on the front of it as, oh, yeah. as kind of a limp mass uh, membrane there. And then we built these these diffusers. Uh, well, you didn't build these diffusers. You got them from Overtone yep. Acoustics, um, and they just built within the the actual base yeah. trap. And uh, yeah, it's turned out really really nice. I mean, it's it's uh, doing a lot of different things. Yeah. It's, it's base trapping and it's it's diffusion to to scatter some of that sound. Yeah, and I think that's a really good example of just innovative design. With you know, you don't. It doesn't always have to be the most elaborate mm -hmm. uh, thing that you use. You know, you yeah. just did a really good job with the innovative design of what we had to work with. Well, yeah, know? and the shaping of it you know a lot of times you have a, a flat back wall of a control room and then you have to do base trapping on top of that and it right. just takes up more and more space exactly. but we had the room yeah. uh, that we could take a little bit from the lounge to get that extra base trapping yeah. inside of the room yeah and i like that you don't notice it either it just yeah. does its thing and you just don't notice that it's yeah. there so. absolutely yeah. and then these panels on the walls uh you you built those uh, yourself i mean you pretty much built almost everything but these are <laughs> they look like standard panels you might buy from a manufacturer but right. but they're kind of wood framing filled with insulation and yep. and yeah I did a really good job with that so next, I think we yeah, kind of go over to the live room. We, we kind of step through this this airlock and uh, we've got heavy duty doors from ISO store. They're one of our go-tos for any sort of additional doors, but they're very heavy. You're only as good as your weak link when it comes to this isolation. And sometimes these doors are 300 pounds a piece. And, yeah, I think and, the, the one in the live room is the HD door of yep. theirs and it's a 300 pound door. Yeah, you know? so we have this first door kind of leading into this airlock and this was just a way to get additional isolation. And then we kind of transition over into the live room. And this, uh, personally, is my, my favorite room of the studio. I do training seminars and things, and when I pop up photos of that live room, like there's audible gasps sometimes, yeah. you know? It's like it, people really love the way that it looks, and, and it sounds amazing in there too. But there's so many neat uh, aesthetic things that also are acoustical uh, right. that, that are going on in here. The main thing is, is probably these clouds that you see. I'll never forget when we came up, when you came up with this design, you gave me two or three options and the feel we went with was like rays of light. I actually drew it in AutoCAD where I had the mix position here and all of the lines of the, those clouds came straight to this point. Like it was like a continuation continue, of that point. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted it to be something that elongated visually that room mm -hmm. um but then also just to be like it's it's uh coming out as, as rays of light yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the inspiration yeah and you know you you gave me like two or three options we were talking about live room clouds mm -hmm. and it was just like i like that i like that whoa yeah you know as just as looking at it that's and the like, one yeah. i sent it to a couple of my friends and they're like well that's yeah there's nothing to talk about you yeah know i mean like that's the one you'll see there's there's areas here where uh where these lights are are, are areas where it's fully absorptive and then there's sections where there's wood slats and, and that allows you to really be creative with where you place instruments. And if you're underneath the wood slats, it might be a little brighter and, and a little bit more lively, uh, but then under the absorption, you get more control. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just love the flexibility of it, you know, to, that you're not just stuck with one thing. Yeah, and you know, one thing we kind of talked about was this big flat back wall too is a really nice focal point, but it does leave another reverb point. And so it actually kind of livens the room even more. Exactly. And we can always, you know, diffuse that down if we ever want to change the sound of that. So yeah. there's just so many options in this room for yeah. different sounds. Yeah, and know? the reason we can get away with that on that wall is that the walls opposite are uh, not parallel to it. You right. know, it, with yeah. that control room kind of jutting into the live room, it's uh, it, it creates a really nice sound. I mean, one thing that's really cool about this space is that it's it's controlled but it's not dead like exactly and, and, and yeah. it gives you especially i know that it was a big consideration with with what we were going for for you because of that kind of uh more folk bluegrass type of instrumentation right. yeah. that you do a lot of um i didn't want a room that was just like oppressive i kind of kept wanting you to let me keep the ceiling height as high as possible here yeah and you kept kind of saying no it doesn't matter that much yeah. it was more of like our cubic inches and it, correct me if yeah. i'm wrong yeah you know no I mean? it's it's good to have the volume i mean a taller ceiling height is is nice but we also had to balance out isolation and doing right. a room within a room yeah. and new ceiling yeah. joists and all those things so. so yeah i mean my dream in my mind was i needed i thought i had to have these huge 20-foot ceilings and the answer is no this room sounds amazing yeah 
we also have the, the soffit trap in this room as well to help with the, some of those tangential modes. Uh, and then the wall panels in here are uh, a little bit more custom. They've got the wood trim around the, the perimeter. Um, but then what I love is that some of them uh, are just absorptive and then uh, some of them have the, the same kind of wood slats that you have on the, on the ceiling uh, to, to help break up uh, some of that energy and, and give some scattering to the room. And I think aesthetically too, just with this kind of angled um, uh, wood trim pieces, like how that also mimics what's going on in, in, on this uh, feature wall. Yeah. Um, I think it just all those little details. Is, yeah, it just kind of makes it, you know, all thread together. Yeah. yeah. You know, having access to your drums uh, and, and being able to uh, switch things out as you go, uh, having this this platform here, so, you know, it's also a bench. You could, you could mm -hmm. uh, sit there if you'd like, but then also having the, the drums down below. And it's on, you were mentioning earlier, it's on, on felt, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yep. Anything in the room can affect the sound in the room. So mm -hmm. we just really took a lot of care. Me and yeah. you kind of discussed every aspect of anything that goes on the walls or on the floor, yep. you know, just, the, and so this was a, a later add, but it's been a, a nice way to store the drums and not have them affect the sound of the room. For sure. For sure. Um, one other aspect of, of the room that I, I love showing people is this, uh, base trap slash storage yeah. area that we, we put in. Like every studio never has enough storage. Right. You know, even if, we, if you plan ahead and you, you put a lot of storage in there, it's it's still not enough. Right. Um, but in this corner, it's kind of a, a weird shaped corner uh, that we did uh, in order to add base trapping and storage. Um, and what's great about it is that you really don't see it, uh, is is that this, this uh, panel here is hinged so that you can just open it and have access to a lot of storage things. <laughs> so, um, and, and and, you know, every every studio looks like this in their storage closet. So uh, a lot, a lot of different cables and microphones and and drumsticks and and uh, but you see behind that is actually some pegboard, uh, which uh, helps us as uh, uh, helping to absorb low frequencies a little better. And then that's all backfilled with insulation as well. So it's just dual purpose, being able to to get some bass trapping in this corner, but also have some, some yeah, good storage. Right. So that's great. And yeah. then we've come to the painting. <laughs> The painting is amazing. You relayed the story to me about how you're a big Dave Grohl fan. In his studio, he has a portrait that he had painted of himself. It's it's a joke, you right. know. Yeah. But at the same time, it's 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 pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. Um, and so you had come to me and you said like, "Hey, I think I'm going to do a similar thing, and I'm going to have my mom paint a picture of me." It kind of was a dual purpose. I mean, it was obviously a joke, but you hope that somebody thinks that it's not a joke, that it, and then it's done its job. If somebody walks into the studio and goes, wow, who does this guy think he is? You know what I mean? Then it's <laughs> right. done its job. But it's actually, it was a golf trophy. The jacket and the spittoon was. So it was kind of a little bit a dig against my buddies, too. Oh, that nice. I, that, that I, that I'd be, <laughs> so I, I, I chose specifically what I wore in the portrait. I will say, there's nothing like this in any studio we've well, ever done. <laughs> One thing I do want to mention is these uh, uh, mic plates that we have in, in, in all the different rooms. And that's where that, that trough is leading to this location underneath the floor. And uh, you'll notice that, and we do this in a lot of our designs, is that this box here is uh, proud of the wall. It's not recessed into the wall because if we had done that, it would have hurt the isolation between rooms. And you can even see the outlet right next to it is also surface mounted. And so, you know, all those little details help to make a better result. Uh, but building this kind of mic uh, plate box around it allows you to have easy access to it if you ever needed to unscrew it and, and make some changes yeah. and soldering back there. No, it is. It's re really great for many reasons. So yeah, it proved to be a good design. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you could set something down on it I if do. you want to. <laughs> but yeah, this space, it's just, it's one of my favorite live rooms that we've we've done. It's just it's so comfortable, it's warm, it's creative, and uh, it's a space, I, I mean, I'd love yeah. to have something like this in my backyard. Oh, well, I do love having having yeah. it in my backyard. So yeah, I know there's a lot of things like just the color uh, scheme and the wood vibe mm -hmm. and everything. It does make it feel really comfortable. And that's, yeah. that's all part of the deal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you, know, yeah, you, I mean, you need to feel comfortable when you're tracking or doing anything in your, you know. Spending long hours in the studio. Yeah. It's like you, right. you want to feel creative and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, we, me and you talked a lot about the lighting choices and that was a whole nother aspect to it. It just goes mm -hmm. on and on and on. Yeah. So a lot to talk about. Yeah. So. No stone left yeah. unturned. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you use the studio for uh, mm -hmm. mostly. Our family, you know, clear back to my grandpa on three sides of the family. My wife's dad, my dad's dad, and my mom's dad were all rooted in music. We had it coming from every direction. So this is really more family and friends than anything else. Yeah. And we all, you know, we love acoustic music. You know, we do have rock 
you know vibes in here at, for at times mm -hmm. but it's it's a lot of uh you know, just projects like that. We all kind of write songs too and uh, and get together and play. So it's like the most extreme version of a family room, yeah. if that makes sense. Sure, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, we, we always have a project going. And me personally, I like having as many as possible going. A lot of people are like, man, don't you just feel like that you're kind of spread things? Like, no, 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 that's not how life works. You got to have them all going. Yeah. And they all finish at different times. And, that's you know. a, a true project manager speaking <laughs> right there. It's like some people like to just focus on one thing, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's nice to have a lot of irons and fire. I do like that. All right, let's go take a look at the ISO booth. So just off the control room, we have this ISO booth and uh, mostly used for vocals, I'm guessing, and then you also probably use acoustic guitar maybe in here. Um, actually, or... and a lot of use is so you can stand in the live room and track guitar and put your amp in here. Yep, so that's absolutely. a really nice amp uh, option, and, and it sounds really good in here. I yeah. mean, we did a really good job of kind of making it a, a very usable smaller space, yeah. you know? And so, yeah, that's been a really good use was we've had several amps in here so you can stand next to the drummer and, or if you're gonna track in here too, you have really good sight lines right. down to the live room and into the control room. Yeah, so. I remember in the CAD drawing, we were doing a lot of sight line studies of like figuring out, mm -hmm. all right, if you're standing here or here in the room, like what can you see? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of studios don't have as good of sight lines as this one. So a lot of the same details in here. We got the soffit trap around the perimeter. We got a ceiling cloud that was built uh, within that. I love too the d detail that you went to with like really following that that shape of the room uh, with that cloud, but also working around like the return air register and supply registers in the rooms. And that was a whole nother thing. It, you know, we're, when we're trying to isolate rooms, we're trying to build these waterproof uh, types of spaces. And, and but then we got to get fresh air in and out of them. Yeah. And so uh, that's always a challenge. You know, sometimes people will do that with mini splits but the drawback to that is that you don't get fresh air return you right. know and and, and uh, with this uh, I, I'd drawn out some things for you and like specific ways to handle it because you can't just uh, cut through all those isolation layers you did without uh, making it a, a harder path for the sound to get out right and and also like having separate supplies and returns for each of the noise sensitive rooms instead of daisy chaining that together with with uh, you know the same duct yeah you know and, and I don't know that like it's not the favorite thing for the HVAC contractor to pull off because it's outside the norm of what they do. Yeah, but... he tried several times to tie it all together. I'm like, well, then this is all for naught because yeah, yeah. we can't tie it all together. We got to have home runs back to the, the unit. Uh, we also have the mic plates down below. So yeah, it's just another great auxiliary space to do whatever you yeah, want in it. Yeah, exactly. So. so I want to take a minute to kind of go over the gear that I've had help with from Sweetwater over the years. Mike Peacott has just been an awesome part of my building my audio gear catalog. And uh, Mike just helped me outfit about two years ago with ATC monitors and it, it just completely changed, you know, the way I can mix and and really record with, with, that, with those monitors. Mike has just done a really good job of kind of seeing what I needed here and helping me get to you know, where I'm going. We have a APA 500 series, this Avalon. I just got this bus compressor, Vintec 1073. Some of the gear talks that me and Lauren would have like around the Brocasti M7. I remember Lauren saying, uh, you know, does, does a Brocasti really matter? There's a lot of good plug-in reverbs out there. And I said, just, you know, man, if you get it, you're gonna love it. He didn't even really give me a choice on that. He just said, this is what you're getting. The phone call right afterwards was like, this thing's amazing. I can't believe I, I waited so long to get it. We got this 1176 anniversary edition that's been a really good part of my vocal sound. Sweetwater helped me choose gear that was geared towards what I was recording and then, you know, how I work and how I patch in and my flow. And actually, they have the same console that Mike has. I was a Matrix user myself, so I had an uh, SSL Matrix in my studio. So when he was interested in the Matrix, um, it was an easy, conversation to walk him through everything. Since I've gone to an AWS 948, um, no pressure on Lauren for, for stepping up there, but it's, it's been just a back, back and forth discussion um, that, that's become, it's become pretty, pretty deep conversations about gear. I don't really have another choice. If Mike doesn't okay it, it doesn't make it here, honestly. I'd like to kind of go over the mic locker. Sweetwater's kind of helped me, you know, build a pretty good selection of mics to uh, fit my sounds. So let's take a look at that. So one of my first like next level microphones Mike had helped me get was the Blue Bottle. It's It's been a key vocal mic for us and uh, really works good as a room mic. Sounds awesome on overheads too, but uh, beautiful sounding. I have a B6 and a B7 capsule. You know, I recall 
getting them a U67 for one of the one of the go-to mics, one of my personal favorite microphones. This has been unbelievable. Um, I mean, when I got this microphone, Mike told me, just stop looking, honestly. This is the tool that you need, and once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And that is the truth. This, this is this is unbelievable. It's been it's really the best microphone I've ever used in my life. Pretty standard stuff here. SM57, use that a lot on uh, drums. RE20, really good tom mic, kick mic. Really like this uh, Sennheiser on toms. Uh, 121 that Mike kind of said was essential for um, acoustic guitar, uh, drums. With the uh, SM57, it's just kind of a one-two punch that's just been unbelievable. And I put that with uh, the, the Heritage uh, mic pre that, and put that together on electric guitar amps and it's just unreal. AKG C3000, really nice on acoustic guitar. Another option for acoustic guitar is these KM184s. This is great for drum overheads as well. Using this with the, with the Neumann as a midside works really good. And this room just has so much character to it in different ways. You can really use these mics and hear the sound of them with a with this, this type of space. This is kind of an older throwback, one of the original uh, baby bottles from Blue. It just really changed um, kind of the entry level for me and I just kind of like keeping it around. And Octavia, these are small, nice for acoustic guitar, the MK12s. And, and there's more, it's just, uh, this is kind of like the key tools that I use to uh, shape the sound and uh, it's kind of always content dependent. One cool thing I added was a punch light that was kind of synced into the console and Pro Tools. It's really cool for the artist to get to see where they're at. Um, you can change it to bars and beats. It also changes colors when you hit record. This lets everybody kind of know where, what we're doing. Um, some people, it, it freaks them out when they see that we're recording, but it's a really good tool to have for drummers and, and, and punch-ins. And uh, yeah, it served, served to be a really nice add to the studio. Mike was a huge part of this process for me, and he was really impressed with the end result. I mean, you know, he does all my mastering as well. Mm -hmm. And one thing that he commented at the finished product is he said, man, I bet that sounds really good in there. Yeah. Because he could tell from the mix. what you he, sent him. Yeah, sure. he could just tell right away that, man, I bet that control room sounds great. Yeah, Mike's awesome. We, we've done a, a bunch of projects together and he's a go-to for me if someone needs oh, yeah. help with gear, um, Sweetwater in general, but then also Mike in particular. Mm -hmm. I just trust everything that he does. Absolutely. And, and he, yeah. he does a really great job. And I think it's also cool that like throughout this process, we've, um, you know, we've actually worked on each other's projects. You know, yeah. I, I, like my band, Rivet Shack, like we uh, sent you our EP, yeah, and you did the mixing of, of that that EP, and even uh, you rented out a space for us at, at uh, Supernatural Sound. Yeah, Lauren approached me uh, or calls me one day, and he says, "I'm actually mixing Gavin's record right now," and I ended up mastering that project as well. It's really been a neat uh, long distance, you know, friendship. Yeah, we played a lot of basketball games together. We become close friends over the over the years and in, including working on music, which, I, which has been great. So it, it's, it's definitely a friendship um, that started off on, on taking care of a lot of clients in their studios and, in, and over the last 20 years has, has grown into something that's been pretty special. This has been on the books for a little while to, to come out here and do this this uh, video, but I've just been so excited to see it in person. Yeah. Once it's all finished and and uh, um, be able to do some testing, hear the room, and I mean it just it sounds great in here. Um, and you guys have done an awesome job, and just really appreciate you letting us letting oh. us do this. Oh, likewise. Honestly, I can't say enough about how the process was meeting you and coaching someone through this a build like this because a lot of times you know people just have no idea what they're even signing up for so True. you did a really good job of helping me learn as we went you know a lot of times it was you know we'd spend a week back and forth just making sure we had the right dimensions right <laughs> yeah well yeah that's you know? a big part of us uh, like our company in a, as a whole we want to share that information because it only makes you you better mm -hmm. at, at what you're doing yeah. especially if you're building this yourself like you need to know why you're doing what you're doing exactly so that you don't skip a step because mm -hmm. you're like oh that, that can't be important so right. thanks again right. so, yeah. thanks so no, much for having this, us yeah this is great yeah. thank you yeah.